Hi there. You call me eating Taco Bell. There are many reasons why Taco Bell exists. Teenagers, the poor, and the Mexican War of Independence. Cut! Taco Bell has nothing to do with the Mexican War of Independence. Then why'd you tell me to eat Taco Bell for this intro? I didn't. You wanted it because you were hungry. Whatever, let's just start this. When you're sitting at home, when you're nothing to do, you watch history. History! When you're watching TV and there aren't any sports on, you watch history. History! Because it's so awesome. You watch history. Yeah! Hi, my name's Moshe Friedland, and welcome to History. You may know me from other such programs as Spain and It Takes a Pillage, the story of the Vikings. But today, my fellow historian Nicholas Hall and I bring you something far more important than the Inquisition or the consequences of murder and rape. Today, we bring you Mexico, the War of Independence. Now, what is the Mexican War of Independence, you might ask? Well, I might answer that I don't know, but I do, so I'll tell you. The Mexican War of Independence was an armed conflict between the people of Mexico and the people of Spain, or at least the Spanish colonial authorities. Now, let's take a short field trip to find out more. To understand the Mexican War of Independence, you have to understand why I killed this grass. I killed this grass because I wanted newer, healthier grass to grow. Similarly, Mexican-born Spaniards and Mestizos wanted to kill the current Mexican government in order to install a newer, healthier one that reflected their desires. Most, you're exactly right. The people of Mexican birth were tired of being ruled by foreigners. They wanted to rule themselves. But they needed someone educated, someone devoted, and someone brave to lead them. They needed... Miguel Hidalgo. How do you pronounce that? Miguel Hidalgo, or Miguel Gregorio Antonio Ignacio Hidalgo y Costilla y Gallega Mandarte Villa Senor, if you really care, was a Mexican priest and member of a group of educated Creoles Yet, Hidalgo was no ordinary priest. He gambled, fornicated, had children out of wedlock, and didn't believe in hell. He also liked independence. Around 6 a.m. on September 16, 1810, Miguel Hidalgo declared independence from the Spanish crown. My children, a new dispensation comes to us today. Will you receive it? Will you free yourselves? Will you recover the lands stolen 300 years ago from your forefathers by the hated Spaniards? We must act at once. Will you defend your religion and your rights as true patriots? Long live Our Lady of Guadalupe. Death to bad governments. Death to the Gachupinis. Miguel Hidalgo, September 16, 1810. This fateful day is known as Grito de Dolores. The rebellion got off to a good start, if you define a good start as winning battles. Padago's rebel army captured a granary in Guanajuato on September 28th. Thirty-two days later, Padago and his followers achieved victory at the Battle of Monto de la Cruces. The rebels' good fortune didn't last long, if you define bad fortune as defeat. You can only win the lottery so many times, seven if you'd like a statistically proven number, and in January 1811 Spanish forces crushed the insurgent army during the Battle of the Bridge of Calderon. As a result of this battle, Miguel Hidalgo, Mexico's knight in shining armor, was captured. He was executed on July 30, 1811 with second thoughts. 
The night of darkness that blinded me has been turned into luminous day, and in the midst of my deserving prisons that I find myself, like Antioch. How completely are the evils that I have brought upon America, now that the dream has now been lifted from my eyes, and my repentance has prostrated me upon my bed. I can only confess, with the foolish about wisdom, how soon we erred, and we have walked in difficult paths, which has profited us nothing. I see the Supreme Judge has written against me causes that have filled me with bitterness, and that he also wants to consume me for the sins of my youth. Miguel Hidalgo, May 18, 1811 Even after the death of Hidalgo, the spirit of the revolution continued to soar throughout the hearts of Mexicans, spreading over the lands of Mexico like a mother bird spreads over her children. The leadership of the Revolutionary Army fell into the hands of Jose Maria Morelos, who caught the position with grace. Two years after the death of Hidalgo, the Congress of Chilpangingo convened and signed the first official document of independence, the Solemn Act of the Declaration of Independence of North America. Four years after the death of Hidalgo, Morelos was tried and executed for treason by Spanish colonial authorities. Yet Wikipedia claims that the war didn't end until 1821. That's right, Nick. It did it. From the death of Morelos to 1821, guerrilla warfare ensued. Wow. But similar to this flame, the revolutionary spirit inside the hearts of Mexicans began to die out. They needed another match. That match came unexpectedly. It came from the Royalist Creole officer, Colonel Agustin de Iturbide. In 1820, most prominent Creoles, or Spaniards born in Mexico, agreed to conservative Spanish rule until less bloody independence could be achieved. Iturbide himself was sent by Viceroy Juan Ruiz to quell guerrilla warfare. That's right. Originally, Turbide didn't support Mexican independence. He wished that they would wait until a better time to gain their freedom. Let us wait for a time of greater tranquility before we irrevocably decide on our system and our destiny. It will speedily arrive. The whole nation is the country, its deputies this day represented. Let us hear them. Let us not prove a scandal to the world. Fear not that you shall be led astray by listening to my advice. Agustin de Iturbide, January 5th, 1814. But Iturbide later had a change of heart. No, he didn't have heart transplant. That wasn't invented yet. He did, however, disagree with the liberal Spanish constitution of 1812, which was reenacted in Spain after a small rebellion there. Seeing the constitution as a threat to the status and opportunities of Creoles, and realizing independence could not be achieved without guerrilla warfare, Iturbide joined forces with rebels throughout Mexico. On February 24, 1821, Iturbide convinced his troops to accept the plan of Iguala. It proclaimed that the Mexican nation was independent of the Spanish nation and of every other nation, even on its own continent. Exactly six months later, on August 24, 1821, the Treaty of Cordoba, which recognized Mexico under the terms of the plan of Iguala, was signed. Mexico was now officially an independent nation. The cycle of revolution was complete. But the question still remains. Did the revolution solve the problems in Mexico? Would another revolution occur? And was Taco Bell created as a result of the Mexican War of Independence? Yet, what do we know? We're just two historians. Join us next week for our special. Was George W. Bush actually a chimpanzee? Thank you, and good night. When you're sitting at home, when you're nothing to do, you watch history. History! When you're watching TV, and there aren't any sports on You watch history History Because it's so 
awesome. You want history? Yeah! Hey Nick, have you seen my yarmulke? No, sorry, I haven't. That's okay, I'll just read this. Remember, when you're bored, watch history. <laughs>